Okay, we're in the third part of the course where things get totally wild and totally crazy. In fact, let's go back for the moment to the 3-2 machine I introduced way back in lesson 1.3, I think it was. 3-2, where three dots in one dot box explode and become two dots one place to the left. And there we discovered one dot is one, two dots is two, not very exciting, three dots is, aha, put in three dots, they explode, kaboom, and become two dots one place to the left, two, zero. Four dots is two, one, zoom. Five dots is two, two, zoom. And six dots is gonna be grand. Six dots, here comes the six dot, zoom. Three explode, kaboom, and become two, watch out, one place to the left. And three of those explode, kaboom, and become two, one place to the left. So the code for six is two, one, zero, I'm going fast. All this is written up below this video on the screen, so just scroll down past this video and you get all this text done slowly and carefully. Um, seven is what, two, one, one. Eight is two, one, two. Nine is a little bit tricky. So eight is two, one, two. So here comes the ninth dot, zoom. Three explode, become two. Three explode, become two. Three explode, become two. And that's it. Code for nine is two, one, zero, zero. 10, I guess, is gonna be then another dot, two, one, zero, one, and off we go. All right, so I did this in lesson 1.3. But the real question is, what on earth is this machine doing? I mean, I can write these codes for, you know, for hours on end, but have no sense of what they are. Um, we even did arithmetic, for example, we did six plus five, I believe, in that lesson, and got uh, some answer that does actually correspond to, to the next number 11, which would be 2102. Um, so we can do arithmetic in here, we can do all this sort of stuff. In fact, it'd be fun to play with division and all the rest, but what is this machine really? So let's work out what this machine is. These dots are always worth one, no doubt about it. That's how I set this game up. But we know that three of these guys are worth two of those. So let me just call this value X for the moment. So I know that three ones, three ones is worth, three of these explode is the same as two X's. So it tells me X is actually three halves. All right, so I know this is three halves. Now keep going. Let me call the value of the next box just Y. But I know three of these guys, two, three, explode and are equivalent to two of those. That is, three three halves is equivalent to two y's. Look at this equation. If I divide both sides by two, whoop, whoop, I see that y is actually three halves times three halves. Y is three halves squared. Y is nine fourths. Aha, now it's coming together. Do one more. Let's call this Z. I'm Australian, I'm gonna call that Z for now. Um, three of these guys is equivalent to two of these. So three, three halves squared is equivalent to two Z's. Of course, to live in America, I can say Z. Uh, divide by those by two, doop, 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 I see that Z is actually three halves cubed. So look at this. We are actually in the powers of one and a half. This machine is base one and a half. Welcome to life in one and a halfness. Amazing. Now, as you look at this, and I freak out. And here's why, here's why I freak out. Let's take 10, for example. These are crazy numbers on the bottom. One, three halves, nine fourths, uh, 27 eighths, 81 sixteenths. These are crazy fractions on the bottom. Yet I'm claiming two of this fraction was this guy, and one of this fraction, and one of this ones, adds up and somehow magically combines to be the perfect whole number of 10. I find that truly hard to believe. In fact, I don't even believe what I've just done. I claim two of these, or we claim apparently, two of these, one of those, none of those, and one of those, makes the perfect whole number of 10. In fact, let's do this in orange for danger. Is it true that two of these guys, which is what, uh, three halves cubed, is uh, 27, six, uh, 27 eighths, plus one of these guys, which is what, nine fourths, plus none of these guys, plus one of these ones, is a perfect whole number 10? Well, do the arithmetic. Uh, two times 27 eighths, that's, that's 27 fourths, plus nine fourths, that's 36 fourths, that's nine, plus one is 10. Amazing. So actually, every whole number is some combination of horrible fractions that are powers of three halves. Using the coefficients, only zero, one, and two, actually. Wow. Now, this base one and a half machine is mighty weird, mighty scary, 
and, well not scary, I shouldn't say that word, mighty intriguing. And there's so many open research problems about this, people don't understand the beginnings of this machine. For example, here's a little puzzle. One is the first number that has a one digit answer. Three is the first number with a two digit answer. Six is the uh, first one with a three digit answer. Nine is the first one with a four digit answer. Check the first five digit answer, I think it's 15. One, three, six, whoops, that's too low to see. Let's do it up here. One, three, six, nine, 15. 24 turns out to be the first five digit answer. Are there any patterns to this? Uh, that one is a little annoying, but three plus six is nine, six plus nine is 15, nine plus 15 is 24, 15 plus 29 is, the 24 is 39. So the next uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, the first seven digit answer we predict is 39. Pity turns out to be 36. So that Fibonacci pattern actually goes out the window. This sequence of numbers has got people flummoxed. So I write about that in the notes that follow this section. Um, yeah, actually I've got tons of open research questions for us to explore. So if you're, if you're part of a math circle of some kind and want like research puzzles to work on and play with, work with base one and a half. Um, if you actually want a research project to actually try to come up with new and wonderful discoveries, a lot of open questions at base one and a half. Read the material attached to the section if you're interested and just play to your heart's content because this is wild and wonderful. In fact, the remainder of this course, this is the last video for this course, um, contains all sorts of crazy research questions. Um, that's base 3 to 2. What if I did say base 3 to negative 1? What is that? Base negative, base negative 3 or something. Um, what if I did strange other combinations? In fact, I've got a whole host of interesting questions. So read through the material that's at the bottom of the screen in the next sections and, um, you know, you're, you're just going to be intrigued. This is, this is lifelong research right here. So here we are, basic grade three, grade five arithmetic has taken us on this journey. We've gone from understanding grade school arithmetic, understanding high school algebra, all the polynomial work, elements of pre-calculus and Taylor series and stuff. You want to think of geometric series as a Taylor series. And here we are in research land as well. Awesome stuff. Enjoy dots and dot boxes, enjoy the exploding dots. This is like a winner. I say this stuff is just magical. So if you have any key results, key insights, or want to email me about them, feel free. I'm, I'm here to receive those emails and, and engage in conversations. Brilliant. All right, thanks everyone.